for the volume that we calculated before, um, what we were doing is rotate this region. So let, let's have this radical x and x squared to be rotated about the x axis or the y axis or some shifted axis, I mean like the last four examples that we covered. However, we're going to take a different approach of finding, of creating solids, you know, having cross sections. And while there's a bunch of possibilities, you know, as far as cross sections go, we can have cross sections that are squares, equilateral, triangles, semicircles, there's more, but we're going to go the simplest ones. So suppose that in this case, in, we're not going to rotate, we are going to fill in this region bounded by the two graphs with with squares. So, okay, well, I'm going to, I need the entire interval, uh, and so far I have one, one squared, one square, and, oh, square, three squares, five squares, six squares. I'm going to keep filling this in, and, well, what's the picture here? This is what you would graph in two dimensions, right? What we have been doing. And well, those lines represent the lengths of the squares. And those squares, you can think of them as popping out of your paper, creating this solid. Now, if we change the perspective, this is what you would see. And these are the, the square cross sections if we have this perspective, all right? Of course, let's, fi let's keep filling in with even more, a hundred, all right? Still we have this cross-sectional, and still we have, yes, well, in, in this case, I fill it in with, in with too many rectangles here, and though, not rectangles, squares that, uh, that pop out of the paper. You can think of it like that. That's not the only possibility. Okay, squares. What about equilateral triangles? Well, in 3D, you will see you will still see this as well. Though and that those lines represent the length of the side of the equilateral triangles, like the little chips popping out of your paper. And okay, let's see it in perspective. This is the cross section, equilateral triangles. If we had that perspective. And well, from another point of view, you can see the, the triangles, right? Popping like popping out of your paper. The other one is semicircles. But don't be confused with, with the rotation that we did already, because even though this looks like circular and essentially the solids of revolution, uh, well, it, it all stems from obtaining circles, right? Rotating circles. In this case, we're not. We're not having circles popping out of the paper, but only, um, only, how, only semicircles. And also, we are not rotating the region like we did in the previous topic. Now, to set up this problem, so let's go back to the, to the paper. Well, so the most common cross-sectionals are going to be squares, triangles, and circles. Well, we need to first set up a formula before we can even set up the integral. And it all stems from the formula that we use to find the area of each cross section. So what we're gonna do is find the area of each, of each cross section and add, well, essentially infinitely many of them. That's the integral, that's the Riemann sum, that's the actual value, I mean, the same calculus concepts over and over. Now, uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to spell this out as clear as possible, still using the top minus bottom idea. Top minus bottom. Where is this top minus bottom coming from and how can we relate it to these cross sectionals? Okay, squares. So the formula to find the area of the square, isn't that the length of this, the length, quantity squared? Okay. So, who can we go back to squares? So, 2D perspective, what you would do in, in, on, on your paper, in two dimensions, every single line here represents that length of the square, isn't it? 
right? If, you, if we change the perspective, these lines are right here, the length. But now, those lines, doesn't that represent the top minus bottom? Which is the, the distance between the two functions, the upper minus lower or top minus bottom. So that's why we have the top minus, this S will be the top minus bottom. And same for the triangle. These lines right here, rep which represent the top minus bottom, that's equivalent to the length of the equilateral triangle. And the same, oh, be careful with the semicircles. The semicircles look different because, uh, well, what's in, in, in the first place, what's the area of the circle? The area of the circle is pi r squared, but because in this case, we're looking at semicircle, only half of the circle, that's why we have this coefficient of a half. That's number one piece of information. The second piece of information, notice I have a top minus bottom, but divided by two, which I don't have in the other two cases. And that's because, because for the semicircles right here, these lines, this top minus bottom, doesn't represent radius, right? That represents the diameter. And to incorporate this in terms of radius, well, we need to divide that diameter by two. All right, so this, this diameter right here, the top minus bottom, okay, let me, let me do one. This right here, top minus bottom, but that's the diameter. We need to represent that in terms of radius to by dividing it by two, all right? So how about we do one example? Oh, the, to find the volume. Well, that's uh, the integral of that a of x function that we set up first times dx. And well, we can justify this by saying area, which is two dimensions times length, that becomes three dimensions, which is volume, okay? Let's do one example. Uh, so, uh, so we have we want to find the, the the volume whose base is the exponential function. Let's plot it. Cartesian plane as usual. And well, so that y e to the two x. That's an exponential function. And. Uh, the y-axis which is really x equals to 0 and x equals to 4 which is another vertical line all right and well we want to find the volume of this solid okay not by rotating the region but rather by having uh, cross sections that are squares and actually uh, very important here is that when we read perpendicular to the x-axis we read we, we need to understand that we have to use functions of x, right? So these cross sections are perpendicular to the direction of the integration, right? So in this case, well, in paper, for me, it's going to be a lot hard to, to, to draw, but think of having uh, these squares popping out of the paper, right? So if we had the other perspective, we would see the squares as we did it in the animation, right? Unfortunately, in the applet that I showed you, I cannot change the function, so I can use the same ones, all right? So in this case, well, the key here is squares. That is, when we set up the function a of x, we will use the function a of x, which is the length of the side squared, but again, this length of this side, and as we did, as we saw in the animation, represent the top minus the bottom, right? So, top minus bottom, quantity squared, all right? And well, top minus bottom, in this case, is the top, it's the e to the 2x minus, uh, the x and the x axis and that's zero squared quantity squared that's going to give us e to the e to the two x squared which reduces to e to the four x all right so we have the a of x formula to integrate so that's volume equals the integral from a to b 
a of x with respect x that's the integral well in this in this case they're giving us the limits of integration 0 to 4 and that's e to the 4x with respect x and well this is a very very tiny u sub u substitution integral that's 1 fourth e to the 4x from 0 down to from 0 to 4 the rest of the problem is algebra it's a fundamental theorem of calculus evaluate at the upper limit minus evaluate at the lower limit that's 1 fourth e to the 4 times 4 minus e to the 4 times 0 and well that's 1 fourth e to the 16 and e to the 4 times 0 well that's the same as e to the 0 but what's e to the 0? 1. One. Final answer. Yes. How do you get negative uh, 0 squared? Negative 0 squared. Oh, okay. Because the bottom is the x-axis. Uh, it's, it's like saying, so the, the x-axis is y equals to 0. It's the bottom, the bottom function. All right? Wait, you didn't square Yes. Yes, so in this case, so e to the 2x minus 0, so we simplify the inside of the parentheses and then square. So e to the 2x, power of another power, we multiply the powers 2x times 2 is 4x. Why is the 0 inside the parentheses? Yeah, that's what we're trying to Oh, okay, okay, yes, so setting the, the top minus the bottom. So this is the exponential, the upper, the, the top function, and the bottom function, which is the x-axis, y equals to zero. All right. We're trying to ask why is zero squared? Oh, never mind. Got, I got it. I don't think I understood your, your question in the, in, in the first place, but it didn't change the value, luckily, okay? so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would. I think I, I just wrote double squares, but thank you for pointing that out. Let's do one more example, and we call it a day. So we have the base of a solid. Okay, let's use the same region as before. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Um, got it? Okay. So, uh, the base of the solid, very the same as before, uh, y equals to 2x and uh, y equals x squared. Alright, and well, uh, in this case, we don't want squares to be the cross section, but actually semicircles, all right? So you can think of these semicircles. Okay, let me make this bigger so the picture goes better. So you can think of circles popping out of the paper this way. All right? Having the perspective of who would see those semicircles. Question? Yeah, what's the advantage of doing a semicircle method versus a um, rotational method? And just providing the answer to And well, in this case, it, 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 it depends on how we create a solid. So this will give rise to totally different shapes. If we were rotating this instead, we would have like a like a cone, like a horizontal cone with somewhat hollow in the inside. In this case, this is not getting rotated. So we're getting a totally different shape. It's like a, like a potato fry maybe, instead of something circular, all right? And well, so number one, we need to define the A of X. So A of X equals to, well, because in this case, we want semicircles, that's by R squared but uh, we don't want the whole circle, that's one half because it's semi-circle, half of it. And this radius, 
the, the radius will be the diameter divided by 2 because recall from the animation and let me go back to the animation the radius is only half of the diameter that is half of the distance between the two functions top minus bottom and well that's a one half pi top minus bottom quantity or divided by two quantity squared well the top function in this case is the 2x and the bottom is x squared over 2 the whole quantity squared well number one let's square numerator and denominator individually that is I would like to simplify this a little bit before setting up the integral so this is 1 half pi 2x minus x squared quantity squared divided by 2 squared which is 4 and multiplying these denominators would give us 1 8 pi 2x minus x squared quantity squared all right so we have everything ready to set up the integral that's volume equal to uh, the integral from a to b that is from 0 to 2 in this case we got those points of intersection from the previous ex from the previous examples it's the same region and that's uh, the integral from 0 to 2 1 8 pi times 2x minus x squared quantity squared with respect x right well, to evaluate this integral, we would need to square the binomial to get three terms and then integrate the three terms individually. And once we find that antiderivative, that integral would evaluate at the top limit minus lower limit. We can do that out outside of the integral, of course, because these are just constant multiples. All right? Yes. So, the substitution applicable in that situation? No, unfortunately not because if we set the u, that's a good question, u equals to 2x minus x squared du equals to minus 2x, well we would need some at least, uh -huh, at least 1 minus x and correct the coefficient which unfortunately we don't have. So in this case there's no way around uh, and, and we'll have to do all the break manipulations here and but well since we're running out of time I will just give you the result of this integral this will be according to my notes this is 2 pi over 15 in case you want to do it on your own all right question Oh, not not if we had the two pi, but we will leave it in terms of pi. That's fine because no calculators are uh, are allowed and. Um